Every time we walk by a restaurant and smell the food being cooked, then by association, the mind will remember all the times in the past when we ate that kind of food. You can't help it. That's how the mind works. Huh? So we have to have a community where we restrict association between the sexes, where we cook only pure vegetarian food that's offered to Krishna, huh? where we have artwork on the walls or deities or we're constantly reading or hearing, chanting about Krishna. Uh, where all together we're, we're sitting down and discussing plans of how to serve Krishna, how to spread Krishna consciousness, how to engage all of our activities in worship of Krishna. See? That karma yoga, that, that community, that association is an absolute necessity. Otherwise, we cannot attain the standard of pure devotional service. Pure devotional service means when 100% of our energy, 100% of our time, 100% of our thoughts and actions are engaged in Krishna service. Well, you might say, well, yeah, I, I can't do that, but I can do something. And yes, certainly something is better than nothing. But this is called karma mishra bhakti, or jnana mishra bhakti, or yoga mishra bhakti. Mishra means mixed. Uh, mixed devotional service, Mishra Bhakti. It's not pure, it's not Kevala Bhakti. Kevala Bhakti means pure devotional service. That's the standard for actually getting out of this material world. One has to engage in Kevala Bhakti, pure devotional service, for a long enough period of time that the impressions in the mind are completely purified of all material contamination. That is the real standard. At that point, one attains actual Krishna consciousness. And Krishna is so pleased by this that he actually comes to see you. To see, oh, what is this devotee doing? This is very nice. Well, this is described in uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, right in the beginning. How when Lord Brahma was meditating at the beginning of the universe, trying to understand, what am I doing here? What is this all about? What should I be doing? Huh? Krishna came to see him. He was so pleased after Lord Brahma meditated for 10,000 years of the demigods. He appeared to Lord Brahma and shook his hand. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you're here. For this, for devotional service, for self-realization. This is the purpose of existence. This is the purpose of life. See, he congratulated Brahma. He said, yes, you, you have got it. You have understood. Very good. I am pleased. Now, I will enlighten you with all transcendental knowledge. Now go and create the universe just as it was before. So, in this way, Krishna gave Lord Brahma the ultimate benediction. Then at the end of this life, you'll go back to the spiritual world. See, that's how it's supposed to work. Lord Brahma is the original guru in this material world. So we're following in the footsteps of Lord Brahma. We're in the Brahma Sampradaya, the, the disciplic succession coming from Lord Brahma. That's our lineage. That is the brotherhood of the esoteric teaching. And it goes back to the very beginning of this material world, the beginning of this universe. So we should try to follow Lord Brahma and dedicate all our activities to pleasing Krishna, and then it will be very easy. Krishna will become pleased. If we simply stay in the association of devotees, uh, now you're all here, so try to stay. Don't go away. If you simply don't go away, gradually all, all good qualities will come to you. I remember one devotee, I'm not going to tell his name, <laughs> but when I first met him, I thought, oh man, what a loser. This guy is not going to make it. I mean, he just, you know, he's the kind of guy who would be listening to class and just fall asleep. <laughs> and then at the end of the class, it's like, hey, wake up, wake up. 
even Prabhupada was there, he was falling asleep. So what to do? So uh, I didn't see, I went, I went on, on tour with Radha Damodar and then wound up on the West Coast and became a BBT editor for a while. And then I went to India and I didn't see this devotee for a long time, over 10 years. I had completely forgotten about him. I thought, well, oh, you know, he is, it's, it's impossible. He's not going to make it, you know. I had just written him off in my mind. And then maybe 10, 12 years later, I ran into the same devotee in Vrindavan. And he was such a nice devotee. I mean, he was first class. He was humble, learned, renounced, still brahmachari after all that time. And he was very advanced, very devotional. So I asked him, I said, wow, you know, how did you... How did you do it? <laughs> I'm always interested to know when I see a devotee making a lot of advancement. How did you do it? He said, well, I heard one class by Prabhupada where he said, simply don't leave. <laughs> Somehow or other, stay. Huh? And by association, by time, you will become advanced. So I took that instruction to heart. And... Even though I, so many times I wanted to leave, I said, no, Srila Prabhupada told me not to leave. So I won't leave, I'll stay and I'll continue this process. And actually it worked, uh, just by time. We don't see day to day how much we're advancing because after the first few days, it's kind of a slow, <coughs> gradual process. But when we see someone that we haven't seen in, in some years, huh? who's been following this process every day, little by little, then we can see tremendous advancement, tremendous difference. Huh? So somehow or other, don't leave. Huh? Don't give up the advancement you've already got. Even if it's difficult, even if you're having trouble. Huh? We see this sometimes on the stock market. Huh? We'll get into a trade, and it'll go kind of sideways, and maybe, you know, we don't, uh, it's not making any money. But if our fundamentals were right, and we had a good uh, reason for getting in the trade, then sooner or later, it'll go in the direction that we want. Uh, so similarly, in the beginning, there may be difficulties in Krishna consciousness. There may be so many things that we're lacking. So it's rough. It's hard when we don't think we're making any advancement. Huh? But I'll tell you this, the days that you chant when you just don't feel like it and when it's hard and when, when you seem like you're not making any those are the days when you're making most advancement. Why? Because you're strengthening your desire to approach Krishna. Huh? Let me tell you from my own experience that this is true. So the days when you feel like, oh, I don't want to do this, I just want to do something else, I want to go back to sleep or whatever, if you persist, then you'll make more advancement on that day than on the days when it's easy and fun. Huh? Those, are, those days are the reward. <laughs> but they always come after some struggle, after some difficulty. Thank you. So hang in there. Don't leave. Huh? Don't go back to the, other, the old ways. Don't give up. That's the main qualification. And we are gradually developing this project plan for a transcendental community. And when, when we get it uh, perfected, and then we get some example community, we want to duplicate this community all over the world. Remember, next year, food prices are going to go through the roof. Remember, I told you so. Huh? You could have started now, today, to get other people involved in this teaching. And by next year, you would have a nice community, and you could have a community garden, and you could be raising your own food and living collectively and saving so much money. Remember, I told you this. Huh? Next year, when you're starving, and you don't have enough money to pay your rent. Remember, I told you this. You could have started today 
to invite your friends and play these videos and share this teaching with them. And by next year you could have a nice community and you could be living very comfortably. But no, if you're not going to do that, you're going to suffer. I'll tell you right now, huh? this, this difficult time is coming. It's coming. If you don't do something about it now, you're going to be suffering. Huh? That's why this teaching is being propagated now. And the, the devotees who didn't listen to Srila Prabhupada, who didn't form agricultural communities, they're going to be in trouble. They're going to be, first of all, they're going to be in trouble because there won't be any food available. And second of all, because they disobeyed their spiritual master. And at the end of their life, they're going to have to go before their spiritual master and explain 